Oh, hi everyone. Um, I'm at Blue Water Lakes in France, Sunday morning, 7 o'clock. Um, we got here yesterday, about 12 o'clock lunchtime. But I didn't sleep from Friday morning until 11 o'clock last night. So I feel absolutely cream cracker this morning. Literally punched up the rods last night. 475 mile drive from my house. It's pretty good, to be honest. Um, but I didn't do no filming at all yesterday because I've got my son with me um, and my father in law. So it's three of us sort of like gears out and stuff like that. I found spots for them. Um, just to sort of pub chuck sort of spots. I felt the lead down, it donked, and that was good enough. Um, and the rods were in an hour. And uh, my boy had a 38 pound mirror, which is a PB for him. It's a world chuff. But I'm on the point. I wanted the point. Um, they're both, you know, my father in law's only been carp fishing for two years. Um, I wanted to be next to him, near him. Um, it's the weedy end of the lake, the shallow end of the lake. Um, as soon as my boy uh, Josh Hick caught that fish last night, I went straight out in the boat. Uh, Got over the top of the fish, landed it, weed him straight up on the take. We're fishing locked up, dumping the leads. Um, it's caught on a uh, Ronnie rig on a pineapple JH baits pop up. <coughs> over in, over in like 40 baits, that's it, free or free. Um, gonna get my fish head on today and have a shower soon. Still, I feel, I feel like a zombie basically. There's so many fish out in front of me, all this end, to be honest, they're, they're fizzing up like mad. Um, I've got bottom baits on. Just on a simple knot, it's not blowback rig. Um, I've got double 16mm KLF uh, sweet orange bottom baits on. And I've done the same, fired out 30, 40 baits around each rod. I half expected of a take last night, but to be honest, I completely flaked out. I got in my bed about 11 o'clock, uh, and 7 o'clock woke up. It's now quarter to 8, just having a coffee, trying to get some life back into myself. It's forecast storms today, like lightning, rain. Um, pressure's going to drop to like, it's 1,032 or something it is at the minute, but it's going to drop down to 990. By Tuesday, and there's so many fish showing that they're everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Um, my mate Jamie Dorrell, one now, I met him at Blue Water a few years back, his wife Ange. Uh, he fishes here three, four times a year, and he had the, one of the big ones out on Tuesday morning last week. Um, fish called Mix's fish at 72 pound. So I was well pleased for him catching that. Um, but I'll, at some point, oh, up. some point today I'll um, show you around the lake. Um, maybe we'll talk to a couple of people. I know another, I know another guy, unbelievably. I saw him here six years ago, Woody. Um, and he was waiting outside the cave yesterday. He's over the opposite side of the lake. They're at the deep end. If I was here on my own, I'd be down that end of the lake because that's where the big girls are. But this is more just trying to get these two guys with me. My father and Josh, um, some fish. If I catch a few, I'll catch a few. But I really want to make sure they have a good time this week. Um, but yeah, it, I'll show you the lake. This is where I far tree line. An easy chuck. I've got actually got one, two rod, lots of rod lengths off that far bank, and you can actually go round there and bait up from the edge, which I'm not really going to do. I don't want to spook any fish that were trolling up and down there. Um, I'm not using no spawn. Everything's going to go in with a fran stick or a catapult, so I get a bit of a spread. These fish are used to bait boats. You know, people going out dumping off a big pile of bait. Um, these fish are pressured constantly. It's not, an easy, it's not an easy lake, 
I mean, I've had some massive hits out of there. I've had the big girl 60s out of there, but um, it's not an easy lake. So we just see how it goes. It's just nice to be away for a week, no work, nothing. Enjoy it. I've got my boy and me, father in law. So we love a right old giggle. Um, but bait wise, I've got um, some test bait with me I'm trying. Um, and I've got the Calif Sweet Orange. I've got 30 kilos of that. You don't need a mass amount of bait. Uh, it's actually big fish. So, I mean, you guys can't pick it up. It's absolutely fizzing out like mad over there on my left hand. I've just had a line on it. It's just like a cauldron out there. The heat, I'll tell you the other thing that's knocked me yesterday was the heat. It was 36 degrees yesterday. But the humidity was, I don't even know what it was. It was I lost gallons and gallons yesterday, just sweating like that. Um, so, I'll keep you guys informed, but yeah, I'm at Blue Water Lakes in France, shown by Jim and Jan. Um, maybe we'll get to meet him. I'm not camera shy. Uh, we'll get to meet my boy and my father-in-law. My father-in-law was PB, he's 15 and a half pounds in the UK, just fishing little club waters. This is like a once in a lifetime thing for him to get him out to France. So. Arranged a trip, hired a van. It was easy, chucked a lot in there. Drove up. But I'll, um, if I get anything, it'll be on. I, I should have, I wanted to film my boys one yesterday, but it was just so shattered and I was so busy flying around sorting out free people's stuff. Um, I never really had a chance to do it. So from now on this week, this is going to be all blocked. Hopefully we get to see some nice fish. They were cruising around like mad uh, yesterday afternoon as well. I've got more floater gear with me, but I didn't actually pick any mixers or nothing up, so I'm going to shoot into town at some point and pick up some chum mixer and stuff. And a bottle of hemp oil, just dose it in that and get them going. But the good thing about where we are, we're on an arm, a spit, and it's all to ourselves basically. And the main body of water is to my right. And then to my left, where we are on the arm, it's all ours. There's little stalking spots I can go on. Uh, they come, you get catching quite close in the edge here, in this shallow water. It's about six foot eight. Uh, silty weed, sort of. But there is hard spots, which I've, I've found for the boys on the end. So, that's how we get on. Anyway, I'll speak to you soon. Hi, uh, evening update. Uh, it's Sunday still, Sunday night, 8 o'clock. Uh, nothing today for me. My father in law uh, lost one this morning in the hook pool. It's really weedy in here, so you've got like hit and hold basically. Um, he lost one, unfortunately. The boy Josh had a little catfish, but he didn't even know it was on. These rods have been out for like 24 hours. Uh, wound him in for dinner tonight. and. Um, a little catfish, three quarters of a pound, something like that. Um, I've had a shower and that. It's been frustrating because it's been like really, really hot today, 29 degrees, but really humid, sweaty, sweaty, sweaty. Um, the fish have been out in front of me, cruising around, not even four rod lengths out coming past me, like submarines they are, massive. Um, I can't, I'd love to be putting some zigs out here, but fish safety, fish care, whatever you want to call it. I'm not comfortable in doing that because of the amount of weed that's here. Um, where I'm fishing, as soon as I hook a fish, or if, if I hook a fish, like I do with my boy, jump in the boat, get above it, land it. Um, and with zigs, it's, it's a no-no for me, really. Um, if, it, most, if, you, if, you know, if you fish France, you see carp on the surface, they do not take dog biscuits in France, floaters. You can crucify yourself trying to catch them off the surface. It's frustrating. They'll take the odd biscuit, but they don't, not like in England, you can get them going, compete and all that. They're not, they're not like that here at all. Um, the weather's now, in the last half an hour, the pressure's dropped from 1,029 uh, down to 1,009. The rain's here now, thunder, lightning in the background. Um, it's supposed to be like this for the rest of the week now. 
so I don't really want to be bivy bound but for fishing wise this is bang on. I've been fishing pop ups on all three rods and now I've changed to uh, basic not this not rigs with um, the end trap semi stiff and I strip off about six inches to do the whipping around the knot and the hair rig and the hair and then leave a little section like that suck loose so it's got a bit of a hinge on it and I'm fishing two 16mm bottom baits KLF Sweet Orange um, with a five bait stringer old school basically um, and I've catapulted about 50 baits but all over the place in the area because I want them grubbing around you know um, everyone else is using bait boats up here piles of baits no one else is caught um, the only fish out so far is the one that my boys had 38 pound so he's had no more action out there but the spot's really clean you cast out there because I, I, I had a little plum round for him because um, he's not really experienced in carp fishing he's been a few times uh, and it's just solid donk so and it's in amongst the weed as well so that's a really really good spot so he's back out there he's on a pop up um, a yellow uh, pineapple um, JH rates pineapple one so he's on that because he had that fish last night so I'm not going to change that on the runny rig um, his left hand rod's on a little snowman with a white pepper pop up let's top it off a little 12 mil so he's happy my father in law he's on a pop up um, uh, yellow as well. I've done exactly the same as what we've done with my boy because they're fishing pretty close together down that end. So we're just fingers crossed, but it's absolutely tipping down now. And it's the air's fresh now, it's been so hot today. I'd like to come out and have a shower, but you come out, come out in the shower sweating as much as you went in. But I'll show you the lake, it's looking bang on. It's absolutely, the wind's picked up, it's pouring down. You can hear the thunder rumbling in the background. I don't know if you picked it up on the camera, but really, really uh, thundering now. You see, I've got my tips up in the air because there's um, there's a weed bed just in front of me, and I've got my lines just going over the top of it. You might just call that a fish to show down the, on the right, out in the middle. Um, they've been showing. I mean, some of them when they hit the water sound like flipping cars gone in, you know. Uh, another one just rolled down the right. Um, they're down here, and there's a lot of fish down here as well. Um, I've had loads of fizzing going on today. I've even put singles on fizzers. They just don't know. I think they're hitting the naturals. Um, but they've been all mid-water on the surface. The odd fish has been smashing the bottom. Clouds of uh, coloured water coming up. So I know they're feeding on something. But a lot of fish have been showing, like head and shoulder in and stuff like that. So it's looking really good for tonight. It's a bit unsociable because we're all stuck in our bivvies now, but I might go down to the, uh, there's a garden centre around the corner from here that sell fish and get everything like that. I might buy a big umbrella, one of the big patio garden umbrellas just to stick out so we can all sit out here. Um, if it, Cause it's forecast this the rest of the week. I mean, I love it like this, but my father-in-law and my boy, it's a bit of a holiday for them as well. So it's got to be fair with them, you know. Um, but yeah, if I get anything, the camera would, would be on. And fingers crossed we get them. But it's, it's looking good. And they've never weather like this in France for a few months now, they said. Um, ben the bailiff. So it's looking good. I've fished here six, seven times before. I've had a lot of the big girls out of here, the 60 pounders and that, and um, I've, I've had trips here where the first two, three days, nothing, and then the fish get on the bait, and then I start piling it in. Steady, steady to start, and once I pick a few fish up off the spot, then I start piling it in, hold them in. You know, you get four or five 40, 50 pound carp coming over a spot, they take, Clear 10 kilos up in no time. Um, so there's no particle allowed here, no plastic baits, uh, no peanuts, tiger nuts, nothing like that. So it's basically a boily old pellet water if you want. But there's millions of roach in here as well, so pellet ain't really the way forward, I don't think. Because they obviously go soft and then the roach starts smashing the hell out of them. Um, so I'm not going to go down that route. 
the air is fresh. I mean, it's dropped. It feels like it's dropped 20 degrees. It feels really nice, nice and fresh. God, that one just showed. I don't know if you can pick that out. That's literally over my, over my middle rod. Maybe a rod down to the right of it. I just showed. So they're definitely down here. And there's a big orange um, koi ghostly swimming around and he's been out in front of me all day long and I know he goes 40 pounds because he came out last week the week before wouldn't mind catching that pure orange he is I don't really want any big catfish because catfish in here are 120 pound plus I don't want to look any of them at all I just want the carp but I think I said earlier I'm not fussed if I catch not catch I'm, I'm trying to get father-in-law and my boy to have a really good time really I want my boy to get the bug for it and then when we get back to the UK he starts coming out with me he's got a set up, he's got everything like that, I've got him all that bit of evil arms, he's got everything so I'd just like to get out with me but anyway we'll see what happens and, um, if I get anything like I said I'll get the, the camera back on and uh go from there and the other thing I want to say as well before I forget as well thanks to everyone that subscribed to my channel even my my last video my social follows I'm on 6,700 and something views and I've gained off nearly a hundred subscribers since then so it means a lot just to press that subscribe button um, it keeps me motivated to do it not that I need motivation because I actually enjoy doing it because I do a lot of fishing on my own but it, um, it does mean a lot. The likes, the comments, whatever, you know. And I'll always answer the comments anyway. The brain's, brain's easing off a bit now. But I will walk you around the lake and show you the swims and stuff like that in case anyone's interested in coming out. It's an absolutely fantastic fishery. There's a two, three year waiting list to get on though. They're fully booked. Um, I, like I said, I called out and got cancellation, so I was lucky. But it, it's a fantastic water. It's a clean water. You know, there's no rubbish anywhere. It's maintained proper. And uh, Ben Hodgetts is the bailiff. He's quite a well-known angler as well. Um, I've known him. I met him here the first time about five years ago. He's actually an angler. And now he's a fishery consultant, a bailiff. He does angling, coaching. Um, he's a really nice guy as well. Um, so you have a good laugh up here. Um, they bring breakfast roll around to you every morning, nine o'clock, full English and a baguette. At night, meals six o'clock, um, and they're big meals as well. We had a um, pork roast dinner tonight, um, so it fills you up. So yeah, it's a bloody good place. Really, really good fishery. Jim and Jan, the owners, with their two dogs on here. Can't knock it. He's done, he's done brilliant with this place, absolutely brilliant. And the good thing they do here is they remove the snags around the edges and the margins and stuff so the fish don't hold up. So they're constantly moving moving the fish about, which a lot of waters in France that I've fished before don't do that. So you get certain swims that are really peggy. Here, they're not they're really that peggy. Obviously the big fish, the 60s and 70s, are going to spend a lot of time in the deeper water because they feel comfortable down there. Here it's six, seven foot. So some of it's five foot to be honest but you know I'm happy to fish anywhere on here um, and they do the season runs to October and then after that you can come over I think it's for about 125 pound a week drive and survive and um, you, you just get on here you might have maybe two or three anglers on there Josh come here I don't want to he, he's camera shy my boy is 20 but he's he's just walked around and rain stopped Right, anyway, I'll, I'll update you in the morning if we don't catch nothing, but if I do, I'll get the camera out. Right, good morning. Um, got my first fish. It's been absolutely hammering down all night. <coughs> it's now um, just come out to six o'clock in the morning, on, on the Monday morning, and uh, Fella went off 42 pound on the nose. 
bottom baits, a double bottom bait on a simple knot this knot. Caleb's sweet orange. Get my mister. First fish off the mark, I'm going to put a bit of bait in there because that spot, they've been boshing over it since 5am. Um, I thought we'd got tape before. But yeah, 42 pound. Well, I'm pleased with that. Ooh. It's forecast rain now, from now till Thursday. Uh, so. Good for it to be honest. Kaya, just put that fish back. Um, Rods back out of the spot. It's, the air's lovely and fresh now. Um, look, I mean, I'm pleased I changed all my baits over to um, bottom baits yesterday. I think they're just feeding hard, hard, hard on the bottom because it's fizzing like mad. And I think they've probably got their noses in the silt and the weed. Um, and I put a Five bait stringer on. Bit of foam around the uh, hair to stop it tangling on the cast, and it's worked. I just put another 25, 30 baits over the top and I cast it out. But it's, it's good. I've been up most of the night to be honest. It's been absolutely hammering now. Um, but yeah, it's lucky really. I, I've, I've got that fish. My rods are up in the air like that, and I'm on a slope bank. And I might even buy pod, you can't adjust the, the position of the alarms. So my alarms are facing out a bit like that, and I'm watching my rods are up. And the fish took it, but he didn't. The alarms didn't register at all. So I'm sitting here, having a coffee, and my bobbin, because it was tight to the tarp, just hit the floor, just saw it, and then it just started to slowly go up like that. No registration on the alarm at all. So now I've leveled my pod out. Um, to get the indication, because it would have happened in the night, I would no way have known that in the dark. Um, so yeah, lesson learned there. But I'm hoping that this now switches them on. There's a lot of fish showing. It's looking really, really nice out this morning. Looking really nice. My left hand rod is and eight wraps to a V in the tree line opposite there because there were trough in there yesterday like fizzing like mad they were troughing like mad it's fizzing so I've got it on there ready for this morning so if they turn back up this morning my bait's all in place my right hand rod is fishing eight wraps to the right tight on the right hand margin um, about three four rod lips off the margin um, because the fish were showing there yesterday. And then my middle rod is 12 and a quarter wraps to that. Um, it's a big tree, if you can see it. There, that's where I'm at, that's where I just caught the fish from. 12 and a quarter wraps. And there's a weed bed to the left and a weed bed to the right. I mean, that one went in the weed, but I just jumped, come back up on the bank, held the rod up and it just pinged through it. I mean, no problem. So, it's looking good for today, hopefully. I mean, it's nice to come away, get a bit of suntan, a bit of whatever, but it's unbearable heat. The fish are just lethargic on the surface and stuff, so this is bang on for us. Um, I'm going to go today to get a uh, gazebo or something like that from the garden centre. So we can all sit out in this rain. It's, it's going to be bivy band all week. Um, so I'm going to do that at lunchtime. They should bring the rods in about 11, 12 o'clock, go down there, top stock up back on some beers and some cokes and stuff, and then um, get fishing again. But it's one of them, I don't know whether to fill it in or wait and, and wait for the fish to turn up. I've fished here before uh, on the other right hand side of the lake on peg two. I've done 50 kilos of bait in a week, 18 mil boilies, all with a frag stick. I had 29 fish, most of them 40s, 50s, cut the 60s. But this is a different ball game up here because it's shallower. They come up here when it's warm. 
but then on the other hand, because it's cooled it down, and it's are they going to be in the shallow water for a bit of fresh water? It's like us in a stuffy bedroom, you open up your window and you get that fresh bit of breeze, it feels nice, it must be the same for the fish, I'm sure. So, I've had one, I don't, I, 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 like I just said, I put 25, 30 baits back over the top. If I get another take on that spot, then I might just put 5 kilo over it and try and hold them. Um, but it, it's just one of them work it out, really. grateful for this rain to be honest and the wind there's a bit of a breeze on here now it's blowing in my face it's lovely and cool so yeah this is good because me obviously me and Josh have had one I put Josh's picture up on this blog I didn't get the camera out like I said I was too tired um, I'll get his picture up on this blog but he's well pleased yeah the fish just showed over my middle right there um, days I'm off, I'm not going to blank, if I don't catch another one, I'm not that worried, I'm, I'm going to sort these two out again today, they're on good spots, um, but I moved all three of my rods yesterday, I weren't happy with them, and when the fish were fizzing, I put all the three rods on it ready for this morning, because they started fizzing till about 11 o'clock in here, and then they just cleared off, so traps are set ready for this morning, and it's worked so far, anyway, if, if I get one, the camera go on, and uh, see you soon. Uh, it's lunch time. Um, this one's been out since six o'clock yesterday evening, and it's just gone. My margin broke. Change over to him. Turn this off for a little while. Yeah, back to you soon, guys. Cheers. Same, so it's already recorded. Right, it's 54 and a half pounds. Four and a half pound. 
absolute beast. Josh, just hold the finger down halfway and it will zoom in itself. It's all weird. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that for a unit. Do you get photos of that Josh side, Josh? Huh? Do you get photos of that side? You can do, do it again if you want. Right. It's getting back, it's alright. I'll put it on camera. Turn the camera off, this was Josh. Just press the top button. That's the second one you got there now, isn't it? Yep. But I'll cast it further to the right this time, whether we're jumping up. Huh? Yeah. Whoa! What's that? There's another one over there. Yeah, my other rod's due to that, um, oh God. that tree out on its own. Keep an ear out for the others. I'm going to go out in the boat next time. Ooh. Hear that thunder? with it, Darren. <laughs> you say it's a common? Even, even a length of fishing line. That's what you need. Yeah. Need some paracord. Saying to him, that's what you're after. Beat your PB. Yeah. <laughs> Beat your first or best, definitely. Don't sink in that. What do you mean? It's up to you.
tyre after that uh, £54.5 mirror ride earlier. Um, went down the supermarket and stuff like that. I ain't really done much this afternoon, just took it a bit easier. Um, the, the weather has been, the rain has been torrential here. Really, really bad. There's a storm coming in again now. Um, we had a storm come through about an hour and a half ago, and as the storm come through, my father in law had a take on his rod and weeded him up. So I went out in the boat in that rain, it was torrential. And the bung went in the back of the boat. So as I'm going out, boat sinking basically. So I'm trying to bail, play a fish, bail the boat out in the torrential rain. I was absolutely soaked. But he's caught, um, yeah, it was a 25 pound common he had. I landed it for him. You know, I don't even risk him going out at his age as well, going out in the boat. Um, so he's well chuffed with that. Uh, no more fish for me, but they're still down here. The rods have been in about an hour or so now. Scattering the bait again over the top. Um, but this is what the lake looks like at the minute. But the sun's there, but I don't know if you can see up there through them tree to the left, there's a huge thunderstorm coming. Um, so it's batting down the hatches time, I think. The rain earlier just absolutely fell from the sky. So heavy. But the fish are still out here, they're still showing. They're not fizzing as much, but there's still some proper lumps jumping. So the right hand rod is where I caught the 54 mirror from. And I'm fishing at eight wraps to the right. There's a, there's a hard spot in between two weed beds. Um, and I'm fishing, everything's getting caught on bottom baits. Just standard, not this not rig, size six, captive curved shanks, you know, from the micro bar from Calder, with pre sharpened. Um, and the end trap semi stiff. I'll just leave a little soft hinge, I'll strip it back. There's a bit of movement there. And a 16mm. Uh, black pepper, JH Bage, KLF, that's doing the damage. I mean, we're doing really well up here. We're on four fish and lost one. There's people who haven't even had a bite yet who are in the good swims as well, down the deep end. But they're using bait boats and stuff like that. And, you know, the fish have seen it all before in here. You've got to do something different if you want to catch them. I've been here like six, seven times and I've always done well. I blanked once in November, which was so cold here. Um, winter fishing on here. But all the other times I've caught, it's just steady, steady. You know, build it up. They're pressured every single day. And the thing is, you get in here on a Saturday on changeover day and you don't know where the previous people have been putting their bait all week. So I go in steady how I want to fish it on the spots I find and it's working. I'm not going long. If you look right across the lake, that tree line over there, there's fish jumping all over there. But the problem is if I go long, that cuts off the left for my son and my father-in-law. I want the fish to better freely come along there. So they're going into the bay behind. Um, so that's why I'm only fishing. My left hand rod's at eight wraps, right hand rod's at eight wraps, and my middle rod's at 12 wraps. So, I've caught off the middle rod and the right hand rod. The only rod I haven't yet is the left, but if I don't, I don't. I'm happy now. I'm, what I'm after out of here is a 40 pound plus common. There are not many commons in here. I mean, my father will just have one at 25 pound, but there's some big 40s in here, and I'd love to get on one of them. The 50. Four and a half I had earlier was is it's a named fish called Sid. Wherever he got a name from, I don't know, but he come out two weeks ago at 6112 or 618, so it's obviously spawned out now. And it was healthy, it was in good condition, so it's just nice to see that a successful spawn. But anyway, um I'll uh, keep you updated if I get anything or any of the other two get anything. I couldn't film my father-in-law's fish because the battery went completely flat. Um, I've been char I've charged everything up now. The phone's charged, camera's charged, GoPro's charged. So get anything in the night or before dark, then this will be straight on. Anyway, I'll catch you soon. I'll just try and stay a bit dry. Good morning. Good morning. It's 
Tuesday uh, morning now, it's just gone 6 o'clock. Unbelievable last night. Um, thunderstorms and it was just the rain. It was horrendous. Anyway, it eased off the rain about 10 o'clock p.m. Um, everything's so I'm trying to dry clothes out, it's just crazy. Um, and then just got in my bed about 20 past 10, something like that. And the heavens absolutely opened, lightning lighting up the sky. And then my right hand rod tore off in it. <sighs> absolutely drenched. Scary playing it, holding a rod like that with the lightning as well, kind of proper coming down it. Um, but I landed that one, it's a 44 4 mirror. I've got pictures of it, but I didn't get the GoPro out and stuff like that. We had to get it done as quick as possible. It was just sheets of water. Um, but it, it feels a bit fresher this morning, a bit cooler, but I think it's going to be a really nice day. It's going to be a really clear sky. But the one thing I've noticed this morning is there's not much activity out in front of me. But the last two mornings have been fizzing up, rolling. I wonder if that rain is really cooled it because it's shallow end where we are. It's cooled it down and it moved into the deeper water. Um, only time will tell. But we will forecast a bit of rain today between 10 and 1 I think. And then after that it's alright and then tomorrow's got a bit more rain and then Thursday and Friday is hot. So I have to wait and see what happens. But um, that broke the weather last night. It was right hand rod, which is my fishing margin, let's ride the um, 54 as well, I'm only fishing 8 wraps, and then it just absolutely melted, I had no choice but to get out in it, because I couldn't let it, let it leave it running with the wheel, I mean I'm fishing pretty locked up, and thing just, the tip just swung around, and it was just, the line was just melting off the reel, um, that was on the bottom bait again, dinner here, we had the dinner delivered to our swim, I got the rods out yesterday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, um, so, what I like about this bait, this, this um, KLF, I've noticed it because I've put loads on the edge here, I'm fishing bottom baits and you don't really, because I, I have to do a lot of pop up fishing, you can, after, when you bring your rod in, like, after, after 24 hours or whatever, I've been leaving them out basically, like a 16 mil is, is gone up to like I'd say close to 18 to 20 mil, but really, really soft, but still stays on there. So all the freebies obviously swelling up as well. My bottom baits swelling up like that, and it's just they're just clearing them up, and they still really smell nice when you, when you break them open. So I'm well pleased with that. I mean, I'm, I'm fishing the bottom, the reason why I'm fishing the bottom bait is because of the amount of fizzing that's going on in my swim, and I, I, they must be deep in the silt or the weed, I don't know what they're feeding me, but they're not taking pop-ups, because I just pop-ups on the first 24 hours, didn't get a take, so I switched to bottom bait, um, I've had fish, I'm on three fish now, and not a bad average either, 42, 54 and a half, and a 44, 4, can't complain at that. Enough of my left hand rod here. So, what I'm going to do with my left hand rod, there's gravel on the far margin. Um, but it's really shallow in the edge. But I'm going to come back two rod lengths off the far margin. It's only about 90 yards, something like that. 95 yards. Uh, so, I'm going to put a, um, a bait over there. I might just put a real, real high of these pop up. leave a single over there because they're crushing over there. I don't really want to put a load of bait over there because I don't want to cut them off on my left. I might just nick a bite and put a high fizz on that there. And the guy in peg one, he had a 49, uh, 12, he 
yesterday. I helped him as I was coming back from the supermarket. He was just playing it. So I helped him. And um, he had that on a bright pink pop up, real bright pink. So um, I might just put a single out there. Trickling the bait in every four or five hours, something like that. I'm putting 50, 60 baits around each rod. Just keep it top top. One thing that there's thousands and millions of roach in it. And I mean like half these size of roach like that, so they must be hammering the boilies all the time when they get soft. So just keep the bait going in fresh. But I'll show you late this morning, it's gonna be a nice day. Just keep it going. Just keep it going. You'll see I'm set I'm set back from my rods. Because I'm fishing the margin to my right, I'll keep it as quiet as possible. It's on gravel, so we'll let somebody walk about making noise. I'm trying to keep really quiet. Well, hi, it's Tuesday evening now, it's 10 o'clock. Um, I've not been on the camera much, I've not even had my rods in the car. Like, I had a 32 pound mirror this morning, half eight. Um, I slipped in back. We've been over on the big lake behind, um, doing a bit of poaching to be honest. 68 acres, but it belongs to a farmer. But everyone in France ran this area, put their catfish in there. And I cut a swim out there about five years ago and was getting catfish to like 96 pounds. And ever since then, people are fishing it all the time. Um, but you've got to be really, really careful over there because the farmer's on his fields went over there today and I was using my 50 pound whiplash spot rod with double boiler and just firing boiler out there like 20 yards and we lost two just absolutely stripped the line it's unbelievable so Ben the bailiff here has given me a um, hundred pound braid um, some cat hooks and stuff like that and we went over there tonight after dinner for an hour but we didn't get any joy but going to go back over there tomorrow I think just to get, I mean they're massive over there I'm going to block it um, but you'll see what I'm on about if we get one we will get one but we lost two absolute beasts, they're just absolutely flat rods here and you just can't stop them um, it's really weedy in there and like rocky and I got cut off twice 50 pound whiplash so we've gone to the 100 pound stuff now, it's like abseiling rope it is it's ridiculous um, but hopefully tomorrow they respond to the boilers the plops of the boilers you see them fresh in the top of the water with the towels um, but yeah no more fish down this end for my father-in-law Josh um, rods have been out now for about half an hour we come back from the catfish lake um, so is it, the fish are not down here like they were in numbers I had that one this morning in my middle rod it was like 32 pounds I've got a couple of photos of it, I'll put it on the blog, I didn't bother filming it. Little fat French football type one. And um, but a couple of fish are showing down here, because I've had the rods out all day and no lines. They were fizzing up, but last half hour or so, it's all, they've all disappeared. Um, it's forecast rain again tomorrow, uh, all day I believe. And because we're on a shallow end, they seem to disappear into the deeper water. But then Thursday and Friday, it's looking really hot. So hopefully they're going to come back up here. And what I'm going to do tomorrow is put a load of bait in on the spots where I've caught the fish. Because I've had four now. And um, I'm going to hopefully, when they come up and it's hot on uh, Thursday, the bait will already be in situation and stop them. Because I'm literally on the cusp of the deep water and the shallow water. Um, so hopefully they'll come across that bait and hold them. I mean, I say hold them. When you're talking 40, 50, 60 pound fish, how much bait can you use to hold a fish like that? a lot of them in here um, but they're not easy fish to catch they're really pressured in here um, I'm top rod at the minute with the four fish so a couple more have come out 47 I think come out uh, yesterday and a 49, 12 I actually helped the guy with that one in the first swim um, but apart from that uh, Woody's in Woodside 2 over there and uh, Clive's mate who was in the boards, they've both lost one each but that's all they've had.
there's loads of fish sat out in front of them, but they're just not playing ball at the minute. The fish. But tonight, hopefully, because I had that one last night, that um, 44-4, uh, half ten. We're getting to that sort of time now, and it's in my margin. Run. They seem to sneak up in this margin here. Am I right? But it's not a breath of wind out here tonight compared to last night. It was pissing that this time last night, lightning a lot. Um, had the MiG fighter jets over us in the last half hour or so. Um, whatever they're doing, some training or something. But anyway, I'll show you the lake as it's just getting dark now. It's looking good out of there. Sit there, Gary. But if I catch a, uh, a lump in the night, then I'll get this camera on. But if it's only like a 30 or something, I won't bother. But I'm going to take the camera tomorrow over to the Cat Lake and hopefully we'll get some of that on footage, the fight and stuff like that. It's unbelievable. got a Shimano spot uh, reel and I was literally tight as anything on the clutch and they're still ripping the line off. I don't know if you can hear that MiG fighter jet, it's coming over now. Morning. Um, nothing to report for me last night. My father-in-law had a 25 pound mirror uh, about three quarters of an hour ago. But I think this rain and that's just knocked this end on, on the head basically. The guy's on the deep end opposite me. I think they had three or four fish in the night. Um, but down here there's nothing, there's no fizzing. Nothing's raining again, drizzling. Um, a terrible night's sleep man, as well. But, um, <coughs> very, very, very quiet. No, no, I've not seen one fish lump out at all this morning down here. And since we've been here, they're constantly lumping out right across from the far margin. I put a single across there last night on a um, Ronnie rig and a yellow pineapple. They've been showing it every morning over on that far margin, so I didn't really want to put any bait over there. So I just whacked a single across, but nothing, there's not a sign of a fish down here today. But my plan of action today is um, give it to about 10, 11 o'clock, go over to the cat lake, try and catch a couple of catfish for them, for my father in law and my boy. Um, and then rest of swim tonight again and it's going to be hot tomorrow and Saturday so they should start pushing back up here into the shallows I mean when I say shallow it's 5, 6 foot deep but the deep end is like 18, 15, 12 so there's a big difference um, but hopefully they're, they're going to rest up I've got a load of bait in tonight and then hope they move up in this heat and they start picking them off I know the spots that I'm on have, have, have produced fish so far, apart from my left hand rod, which I'm using now as a bit of a roaming rod. Um, so, that, that's how it is at the minute. I'll show you the lake this morning. It's a bit of a drift out there. A bit of a wind, it's a sort of swirly wind, it's not blowing in any particular direction, it's just blowing all over the place. camera on um not get anything on the main lake to, like before we pack up and go over to um cat lake but i'll have the camera over there on the cat lake and i'll get that filmed 
Hopefully we'll get one. We lost two yesterday. We'll kit it up for them now, so we should be all right. Wednesday morning. This one's just gone off on the right hand rod again. Twenty nine twelve. Twenty nine twelve. A single uh, 16 mil bottom bait. So, breaks a day up that one, that's for sure. Let's get back. Ben doing some work. What? I said it's Ben doing some work. How are you going, bro? <laughs> Don't put that on there. I am. You're doing some bloody work. What? You're doing some work for once. Oh yeah. Those are fish in front of Darren right now. Yeah. <laughs> right, we're into a catfish on the catfish lake. We just got absolutely drenched. Just give him loads of pressure, Josh. Is he moving? Yeah, I'm moving. Yeah, wind him down. Tighten up a little bit. If we're on a hundred pound braid, big massive catfish hook with three 16 mil boilies on it, and we've just been spraying boilie over the top, and uh, we're in. Right, I'm gonna put this back on in a minute when we land it. Look at this, we're on a hundred pound braid and the clutch is locked down on this reel and it's just absolutely ripping it. It's a big catfish. What does it feel like, Josh, your first catfish? Hopefully I'll get it. Powerful, isn't it? Yeah, he's not done yet. Power look. <laughs> Can you see it, Josh? No. Oh. Unbelievable power. Right, wind him down again. He's trying to go in that corner. Quite enough, yeah. No, nah, no. You go abseiling with this braid. Over there. Yeah, keep going, keep, keep winding. This is 15 minutes later, yeah, we've still got this fish on. This is a this is like a I don't even know, five and a half pound test curve spot rod. And it just absolutely bends it. Right, the fish is here. Hopefully. Here he comes. It's a lump. <laughs> Right, this lake where we're fishing is 68 acres and we're in a little corner. Get in there. No, yeah, just get to land in it, Dave. Get in it, Brenda. Um, I'm gonna, we're we'll getting him out. Just keep the pressure on, Josh. Huh? Just keep the pressure on. Yeah. He's, he's hooked right in the corner of the mouth. There he is. 
There you go. Right, all right. Press, ease it a bit. Ease it a bit. Give us that net. I won't get him in the net, but I just want his head in the net. Yeah. Right, go on forward. Got him. Jesus. Right, Josh, carry on filming with that sec. My arm's tired from that. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Is it silk? Guys, there's the rig. That, the size of that hook, 100 pound hook limp break. That's a lump. Dave, will you pass that retainer? What, that? Yeah. Let me try and get him in it. Well, I'm just going to strip off. Excuse the bare skin, guys, but it's really silty and I don't want to end up drowning. need a sensor. Drowning. Let me know this one with Brenda. Can you get this rod for me? Yeah, Dave, hold that rod. Can you just grab this rod for me, please? Right. It's not still in it, is it? No, it's gone out. No, yeah. Right. It's a lump. How are you going to do it? That's all right, I had one. Probably a little bit bigger than that yesterday. Yeah. Oh, I said it was 50 to 60. We didn't bother weighing it, we just literally, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to wait for him. I don't know how to do this. I'll tell you how to do it. You better dip that net afterwards, and that's me and Don, them skanky little cats that's bringing in diseases to our lake. Who's caught it? Josh. I got it. Ben, do me a favour and just lay that out. I'm going to bring him up. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Ben, we just got soaked in that rain, man. Are you kidding me? My t-shirt's like... You've got a brolly there. I'll run back. I didn't got a change. Do you want to put it in this, do you? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to weigh him. What should I weigh him in this? I'll weigh it, you break, you rip me neck. I'll break it, I think. you break your neck. Just lay him in there, in the net. I'll tell you how big it is if you want. It's about 60, I reckon. 72. It's a lump. About an average size, wouldn't you? Yeah. That one I had the other night, Ben, was a bit bigger than that one. We said 50 to 60. Nah, this has got a much bigger head. Did you see the one I had? Right, let's have the scales. Me and Ben can just wait. Who broke me into this? Come on. Ben, this hand. You get the back, but you break this. Yeah, you just grab here. It'll break the bar. They're, they're a bit heavier than the average fish. Oh. If you stick it by hand, you'll break the bars. Sorry, I'm watching it. It's still on the ground. Is it? Yeah. Come on, you've got to lift your side. It's, it's going, you wait. Yeah, you're going to have to take about four. Shove it, shove it in the middle. Come on. You're going to have to take about six pound off. 96. There you go. Eight. Take the net off. Wow. Take the net off. It's over 90. 90. Pounds. Tap on the size of the head. Yeah, I've, only got I've only got yeah. to take the landing net off. 94, I think. Size, size yeah, size I was going to be chuffed with 50 to be honest. Uh -huh. I was going to be chuffed with 50. Well, me and Jay had was longer than that. And we just said it was Took the hook 60. out, yeah? Yeah, sell out. Sell it as 50 or 60. <laughs> it's black, we just went. Yeah, so you can see it's probably a, bigger. He's all, all the hooks been taken. I needed a glove off your pen, that's what I needed. Okay. Take a look then, take a photo. Josh, are you going to hold this? Right, no. A lot of people should Wait, watch the dogs with the pellets. Wait, come right, on. We're going to have pellets. No, none on the hook. No. Josh got it there. Fudge. Yeah. Right, let's get this back. You ain't have a picture with it? How am I going to get a picture? Do you lie next to it? Just pick it up. Yeah, Josh, come and lay next to it. Pick it up. No, just come <laughs> and lay next to it. Then I need to get mad in the net, though. What? I need to get mad in the net. Mate, yeah, straighten them out. Oh, yeah. I bet you're glad you come up. Josh, here. Yeah. 
Just lean up against Just lean up against the tree. Or bend the Jason had. Yeah, Josh. Pull the net out, see that done. Pull the net and the sling out. Just lay next to it on the grass. So you can see the size of it. Because it's as long as you. Go on, Go on lay next to it, Josh. Fudge, <laughs> look. Body here. It's six. It's, only, it's, it's about six foot long, isn't it? Oh, look at its deformities and its tail. Barney. It's massive. Barney. Josh, let me just get my phone. I'll take pictures. You show them up. Come on, hurry up. Ben, do you want him over the stock pond? A little late. Oh, a little late, sorry. Kiss it, Josh. Oh, I'm kissing it. <laughs> You've done plenty of that in Portugal. Things that look like that. Now put it back in the street. Yeah, let's go. Oh, look at the size of that. I showed Ben yesterday. Jim, I showed Ben yesterday. Yeah, I'll do it. Pull back, pull back. Dad, you need to tighten that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let him go in. <laughs> Hold the uh, rush room. I'm taking the Marlin fishing next week. Why, help him out if he needs it. He's alright, he's alright. 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 Oh, don't ever come and visit me in Thailand when I'm out in Thailand. Just, don't, if you, if you, don't ever come over to Top Cats when I'm there between December, January, and February. We'll make sure we're going over there. <laughs> because I don't want you having a Mekong or an Arab <laughs> If you can't handle this, then you're going to have to play a Mekong for two hours. Oh. Go on. You're going to have a kip after this, don't worry. Oh, another one. <laughs> yeah. Just get the rod in there, bending as well. Yeah. Alright? Yeah. Here it comes. I'll just strike it then. Take the line, drop it. Yeah, it's drop weird. It. Yeah. Here it comes. I'm gonna get a land. Oh, yeah. Cattle, don't I? Cattle, £100 break. I've got three boilers on it, that's it. Yeah. What, two bottom mates, one pop-up? No, three bottom mates. Yeah, yeah. Quite close in, to be honest. I'm trying to use two cameras. Dave, if you land this, yeah, you become a car. Maybe one. You become car, you get a track. <laughs> <laughs> you're all of a sudden becoming a, becoming a carp king. Maybe. Oh, bloody hell, yeah, it's got out of <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know this one, Dave. What, what, Granddad. The bigger one or not? Granddad. That's huh? your PB, isn't it? <laughs> get in there. Oh, might as well just unhook it and get in the water. Yeah, you might as well get in the water, Dave. Isn't it? Pick it up and have a chat. Get in the water. Get in the water. Get in the water. Just watch the water snakes. Oh, I don't want to. Oh. Boy, he's up to the same place as the other one. Just unhook it. Pick it up. Get a photo. I'll get all wet now. That's alright, have a shower before dinner. Dump the lead as well. <laughs> oh, my... What? My clean shorts on. Yeah, you take go... your shorts off. You won't go below your shorts. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. Better, you're fully up for it, You're going to get slime all over you. better take your shorts off, they're clean, Dave. Go on. I'll just put them on, clean. I'll yeah, take them off then. Just walk up you got yeah. boxes on? No, I've got woolly balls. Shut up. You've got, you got pants on. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Wentz. Yes, what, that's right. You've got pants on, then take your shorts off. <laughs> if not, just come in. Come on. Is it cold? Just stand there. And the water cold. The water's pretty warm, to be honest. 
There's a water snake there. Hey! Hand under the canal. Ben, ben, hold that. Ben, ben, I'll try to get a photo of it. Don't let him out there, don't pick it up yet. One hand under, under the head. Did you get the hook out, Darren? Yeah, it's out. It's out. All you got to do is don't put your hand on it in its mouth, one hand under its mouth and one under its oh, tail. Oh, I see, yeah. One under its mouth and then one under, under its tail. Don't let him swim off. Oh, no, it's going! <laughs> Ben's got it, don't worry. He's moving to the further position for you now. That's it, just slide. One hand up further to the right and one further to the That's left. That's it. Left hand further down, left hand further down, go down the tail, go down That's the tail. That's it. Keep going. Down down right. Lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. Quick, quick, he's gonna go. That's it. Well done. That's it, put him back. No, What's sure. he been? 20 pounds, 25? Yeah, 20, 20 25, yeah. 20, 80, 80 pounds like that. So imagine a 90 pound if that fought like that. Yeah. Josh's one would swallow that. Put him back. Huh? Josh's <laughs> one would eat that. Just make sure you don't turn and bite you when you let go of it. Should I let him go? Yeah, just yeah. let him yeah. go now. Make sure you don't turn back don't on it. Away it. You can wait. Nah. He's about 25 though. Make I'll sure you hold its tail so it don't turn back and bite you. Turn him back! <laughs> <laughs> well done, David. Oh. Hi, just an update. It's Wednesday night now. It's coming up to 10 o'clock. Um, after all the catfish action today, um, I've rested my swim. Um, so. It's dark, I've just got the kettle on, have a cup of coffee. The fish are now are moving back up here. The rain stopped uh, about two o'clock this afternoon. It's been warm since then. Um, straight away, the fish are just moving up here. They're jumping, they're fizzing up out here. Um, they've not been here for the last 36 hours, I'd say. I mean, I, I know I picked off the odd couple of fish, um, but they've not, not been up here in numbers like they have been before, previously. But they're definitely here now. So I've got the rods back out. It's been rested again. They've been rested again today. So hopefully, oh, shit, just drop the kettle. So hopefully tonight we get some fish. Um, what I've done with my boy, um, I've put him a rod in the channel, which is halfway down, instead of right across from both rods. Because been, there's been a few fish jumping there. I found a clear spot for him. So I've done that. Um, so hopefully, we pick up some fish tonight. I'm still going in light with the bait at the minute. I was going to put a load in. But when we got back from the catfish lake, the fish are already up here. So the last thing we want to do is fill it in um, and spook them all off. But I've been putting bait in steady for the last 36 hours. And, and, you know, I've had one fish this morning, just under 30. Um, but there's still bait out there from the last couple of days. I'm getting that scattered. Um, be washed, really washed out now by the time they get on it. So hopefully tonight, or not, if not in the morning, because every morning my right hand rod's got on the margin here. Um, so I'm banking on that one for a start. My left hand rod, I've got out eight wraps, I've had not a bite on it since mm. I've been here. So what I've done now is I've put a um, little snowman rig on, uh, with a blow, blowback rig, and a um, 16mm bottom bait, and a little 12mm pineapple. Um, the KLF, so I'm hoping that that little bit of visual because they're really, really troughing out there on that left hand rod. I just can't get a bite on it. They're fizzing like mad. Fizzing like mad. The liner. Um, they're fizzing like mad out there, but I just can't get a bite on it. I can't work it out because I definitely can't because all of a sudden you'll see a head pop up. Um, I know they're smashing naturals, whatever that is, blood worm or whatever it is. I don't know what it is. But I hope you're seeing this all right because it's obviously dark now. I've just got my Ridge Monkey light on. Um, but yeah. Hopefully tonight will be in the night. I mean, July weather for here has just been crap all week, really. Um, up to now, loads of rain and wind. And obviously, like I said, I'm in the shallow part of the lake where all three of us are. Um, and I knew if the weather was going to be bad that they'd push straight back down that end. I mean, 
did, but today, since the rain stopped and it got really humid when the sun was out, it's hot, they started pushing up. I've probably seen in the last hour 12, 15 fish show. Not, not necessarily my spot, but in this area. So it's a good sign. Anyway, I'll um, catch you in the morning for an update and hopefully some fish. Morning. Quarter six on a Thursday morning. The left hand rod just for the first part of this rod.
that's the rig I've, that's the rig I've caught it on. That little ounce lead. And do not it's not the rig, low back rig. Longish hair. Nails them every time. Six takes, six fish landed. Thursday morning, left home with first bite of Red Off Fitness is a video. Thirty nine eights. Thirty nine pound eight ounces. It's a lovely looking fish though. That's just good that is. I've had fish every day of the trip, but only like one a day or whatever it's worked out. Uh, that was good. That's the first bite that I said on my left hand rod. It was absolutely fizzing like mad from like five o'clock this morning over the top of it. And I've had it here before, we just can't pick anything up, but now that little snowman rig. start today. It's going to be a lovely day by the look of it. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at at the moment. So I'm just coming up. There are my rods. Um, so yeah, I'm well pleased with that. That's my number, that's my six fish. Uh, plus Dave's had one of my fish off one of my rods. Um, it went yesterday morning he was sitting here, so I said just pick it up. Sure, it's good. Cool. That was 25 pounds. Sharing. I want them to be catching fish as well. I'm hoping now that this weather, the sun comes out, they all start pushing up here. There's so much activity last night. But quiet for a night, not a touch. Um, the guy opposite in them boards had Adam, I think it was about 2 o'clock this morning, so I quarter past 2. They had an absolute screamer. This one here was just a one toner, I just had. No indication, nothing, just straight onto it. One time, it's the first proper about one time I've had. Um, so, yeah, looking good for the rest of the day, that's for sure. It. Josh has got one now, his rod's been out since yesterday after dinner. Um, it's just weeded him up at the back. But he's managed to pull it through without going in the boat. So it take time.
That's a nice fish as well, Josh. That's a good fish. That's a, that could be a 40. That's a good fish. This one, it just weighed it. This is Josh's 38 pound. Josh, wipe all that muck off him with a bit of water. That's it. Water got into this, did it? It's all misty, can't see nothing now. Hardly anything. You might have to just wipe the lens. Eh? The lens at the front might be that. Come on, then, let's get him up. That. Get him up. And every size, just, just come down. Up, up a bit. Look at me. Wait a minute. Slippery. Look at me. That's right. Good lad. Well done, oh. Josh. Long wait. Mm. At least you know to come back up this area now. Yep. Oh. Well done. Proper Put him up back, back down here, Josh. Walk yeah, him down done. here. I'll help you. I'll be filming down here. Yeah? Alright. Yeah. Just grab that in. That's it. See you, mister. Yeah. Well done, Josh. That's it. Same weight though, That was on a snowman rig, and that's been out since half six yesterday evening. Just tore off now. Uh, they've started to show over there in the last hour, I suppose. So they're definitely over there. fishing on my own and I didn't have people that I knew on my left then I'll be having my rods across there there's a lot of fish showing but I don't really want to cut them off going into this bay to the left because it's a dead end there and I'm sure if I put lines across there they'll just come back out the other way so I'm letting the fish come through to them at the other end but I'm mapping my spots where I am um, but they're all on bottom baits again I've got all my fish on bottom baits this week short um, changed over from the semi stiff uh, two three days ago and I'm using um, dark matter uh, braid you know it's like black it's really heavy but I'm using really really short hook limbs like that and light leads like ounce leads um, I'm, I'm fishing it's clear when I'm fishing I'm trying to keep the disturbance to a minimum because um, I'm really 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 close in fish through the night yet. Apart from Sunday night I want it eleven o'clock but that I wouldn't call that like night time because it don't get dark till ten ish. But nothing like one, two, three o'clock in the morning, nothing like that. It's strange. Um, but it's been a nice day today weather wise. No rain, thank God. Uh, but a few fish have come out down the other end of the lake. One guy's on five 40 pound plus fish now, I think. Well, I think it's on seven fish in total. I'm on six, or well, seven if you include the one that I give my father in law. Um, and I've got lost eight fish. Every single take I'm getting is a result in the fish, and the rig's working well. The bait's working well. Um, it's such a good, you 
no, I think that debating after I had my rods out for 24 hours this time, and um, I'm fishing bottom bait, and I bring my the um, bait in, the KLF from JH Baits, the sweet orange one, and you break it up, and it still smells. It. It's such a good bait, really soft. It just disappears in your fingers, but it's staying on there. But it just smells as good as when you put it out. Um, so I'll, I'll just keep topping and swim up basically. Washing the baits out, I've got them in a bucket. So the freebies are going out there. Um, I'm using them within 24 hours, so and I'm only fishing at eight wraps, so it's not as if I've got far to come, far from the cap. But to me, you know, these fish you know, you're used to seeing boilies and probably aware of, of, of a, a freshest looking bait, you know what I mean? But an old bait that's been soaking, they probably clear them up, no problem. And when they hoover them up, it's like mush, so they're just eating a lot of them quickly. But the man, I've never seen a lake like this place. This morning when I had that take, it was fizzing out there as if someone put air pumps on. It was ridiculous. And my bait was right in the middle of it all. And it took 45 minutes to get a take. So, you know, you see one or two fizzes on a normal lake, and you think, yeah, I'm going to get a bite, get a bite. But when I had that this morning, I think there must have been six or seven, eight fish on that spot feeding and I didn't think it was going to happen and then wallop it was off just a one toner I'm fishing quite tight but it still took it quick um, you don't really get line in this either I can't work that one out because uh, they're on my spot but I'm not getting no indications just uh, if I get a bleep it's, it's a run and I can't work that out fishing tight, I always wanted to fish quite slack lines but there's a lot of weed in front of me and I don't really want them to bury their heads straight in that weed because um, I'm fishing over the top of a weed bed that's in front of me and I don't want to fish my rods up high because I'm for such a short distance and I hate wraps nothing um, but yeah it's working definitely quiet tonight but I can't recommend this place enough, you know. If, if you're thinking about coming out to France for the first time or whatever, this place is brilliant. The food package is good, the people who run it are brilliant. Bailiff Ben is brilliant, the right laugh with him. Obviously, you, you, you know, you've got stack stick by the rules there's, there's limits with a bailiff you know they're easy going up here let you get on with it don't keep disturbing you and stuff like that drive, it's all motorway apart from the little village turn off to come in. The tolls um, in the van I've got, which is a transit, I've hired that from uh, Europe cars, Europe cars, and the tolls, the tolls in total, there's two tolls you go through, the first one was 22 euro 60 cents, and the last one was 8 euros 30 cents, so 30 euros, and that's the quick way, you can avoid the euros, the um, the tolls, but it takes about six hours to get it. And I've done it once a few years ago, never again. Bloody nightmare, man! It was all like country lanes going through little villages, and never again. It's worth paying the 30 euros in total, to be honest, to get it. But yes, yeah, it's, it's a brilliant venue, and you're in the middle of nowhere. It's like so peaceful. allow a maximum of eight anglers so you've got so much water and there's like 11 12 swims so you've always got an option they do a draw when you get here on a Saturday but you've always got an option of moving so you're not stuck in that swim for the week and they did 
dinner up at the lodge between five and six whenever they ring the bell to let you know. You have a bit of a social with the people on the lake. We catch up, chat and that. It's, it's good, good fun. And they do a lake exclusive on here as well. I mean, you can come here without the food package, drive and survive, which works out a bit cheaper. It's clean here, there's no litter anywhere. It's a spotless place. I've got two dogs that run around here, Barney and Fudge. Spaniels, but they're, they're brilliant dogs. Friendly. The only thing I sell on here is to, to make sure if you are, do ever come here, don't leave any boilies on any rigs if you're not in your swim. Because the dogs will just grab them and the last thing you'll do is hook a bloody dog. Because um, a dog being a dog, it doesn't matter whose dog it is, they'll always try and do stuff like that. So you just got to be a bit vigilant with things like that. But silly rules here and stuff like that, they just let you get on with it. It's uh, crushed barbs here only. Um, no lead is allowed. You can use tubing which I'm using. I use a tungsten tubing from Calder. I find that the best one. It really pins it down. Um, I've used a size uh, 6 captor curve from Calder Rooks. Slate corder, you see, you see it all the time on, on Facebook with their hooks straight and stuff like that. I've been using corder hooks for well over 10 years now, I'd say. And I've never had any problems with any corder hooks, never had, had, had one straighten on me or anything like that. I think a lot of that's down to like bad angling, I think. Um, you know, snagged up or stuff like that, and they're just pulling for it and it ends up straightening the hooks and it out. But Never ever have I had a, a quarter hook straighten on me or snap on me or anything like that. Because if, if one ever done it, I would never use them again. It's as simple as that. Because you can't take that chance. You know, you're waiting 24 hours, 36 hours for a bite and you hook a fish, you wouldn't land that fish. The odds have got to be in your favour. And that goes with the line as well. The line I'm on is the. the ESP Synchro, fully loaded, XT and 18 pound, and never have any fear with that line. It sinks well. It hasn't got a mega amount of stretch in it like some lines. It's got a decent diameter on it. I think 0.33 or 0.34, something like that. Um, so it's, it's a bloody good line for the money. really like um, is Nathan's fish. I had it out at, in the winter three years ago in November. I had it out, I caught it and um, it bottomed my scales out at 66 pounds. It was 70 pounds plus easy. But it was two o'clock in the morning, there was no one about. Um, I couldn't get hold of Jim because obviously at that time morning you're in bed asleep. Well, so I had to take the reed in a 66 pound. Couldn't do nothing about it, but he was bigger than that. And he's a lovely looking fish. He comes out once a year now. So I'd love to be reacquainted with him. And get a proper reading. I think he might have dropped a bit of weight. He's an old fish, but I'd love to catch him. Like I was saying, my, 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 my goals for this session was this trip in France was to catch one of the 40 plus commons. Still got time. A couple of 30s have come out of this big commons. But there's a couple of old, bigger, original type commons in here. And um, they could be over 50 pound now. So I'd love to get one of them. But anyway, if I get anything, I think you know, or one of the boys at the other end, my father in law, Josh, get one. Sunday night, and it was pouring down with rain, so I didn't bother filming. I got photos of it, so they'll go up. Any fish that haven't been on film will be on. I've got, I've got pictures of them, so they'll go um, on the blog. 
That's this fish that didn't just roll down the back there. It's only about 80, 85 yards, I'd say. Possibly 90, a push across there. So it's an easy chuck. Um, but like I said, I don't want to cut them off down there. Because it's like a dead end bay around there. And the fish do get in there, the big ones get in there. Um, you know, if they've been caught, they'll probably go in there and sulk or whatever. Because no one really bothers fishing behind it. It's really weedy. But it's my kind of water, that is. It's really weedy. I love it. Um, but I've been checking behind here. See nothing in there. Cut the fish on the surface, but not huge fish. Um, there's a couple of big grasses I've been swimming around that year. But yeah. I'll get one up. I've, I've already booked on here. Um, 13th of July 2019. Two years' time. That's the nearest availability they've got. Don't be put off if you get your name down. Just call them up. Um, get on it. It's a fantastic water. It really is a fantastic water. You know, and if you're in the area, it's blue water because you've got a lot of other lakes around here. Even if you give them a call, you can come and have a look. Have a chat. They're really approachable. Jim and Jan, they're fine. Um, yeah, it's a cracking water. I mean, when I first started coming here, it, the water was literally blue as the name is in blue blue water lakes but at the moment because of the weed and stuff it's got a bit of a green tinge to it but it's still quite clear but the water's down by three foot I mean three foot because my rod is right down there normally it'll be up here where I am um, I have to get in the water to land the fish at the minute which I don't mind doing um, I've got to make sure that I don't get any harm because they're big lumps you know you're handling big fish waist links, all provided. All you've got to bring is your landing nets. You dip them on the way in. You've got to make sure you dip them as well, because it's brilliant. You know, this disease in the UK at the minute, the KHV virus, and stuff like that. Um, just dip them. But yeah, it's good. they don't have no tackle. You've got to bring all your own tackle and stuff with you. They sell a bit like leads and small bits of terminal tackle. Um, but gigantic is around the corner, so if you the same that they haven't got, you can always go and jog and it can get it. Um, but apart from that, yeah, it's, a, it's, been, it's been a really, really good week. It's been nice spending some time with my father and all my boy. Because you know, when you're back home, you're leading your own lives and busy doing this, busy doing that. Um, but yeah, it's been thoroughly enjoyable. Just not driving for a week and just relaxing. I feel absolutely shattered because obviously I don't. St never sleep when I'm fishing, I doze off and stuff like that, but it's what it is, I think it's subconsciously in my mind that I'm thinking that alarm's going to go and I don't want to miss that run or, or whatever, I don't know what it is, but you guys probably are similar, um, you know I get home from a week away in France and I need a week's holiday to get over it, it's probably my age as well, 45 years of this month, but anyway, I'll um, Make myself a coffee now. Fag, sit back. I'll just take this in and hopefully pick a fish up before it gets dark. But I'll catch you guys soon, yeah? Good morning. Um, it's Friday. Friday morning at 6 o'clock. It's been pissed out all night long. No action at all. Not heard any alarms going around the lake.
up as an elf. This place wishes better hot winters. I've had it before here where it's been 35, 36 degrees all week. And it fishes its head off. Other times I've had it when it's raining. For a week like this time. And it's very, very quiet. You can bend the bathing from Jim the owner said I've done really well in this swimming stuff. Sneeze or something, flipping echoes, like proper echoes. Really. Dave's got one, we lost one earlier on this rod and he's got one now. That's it, wind again. This will be the biggest carp he's ever caught. That's it, wind again. Ah, oh, you're alright, go on, it's on, I can see the tip moving. That's it. Yeah, that comes again. Yeah, that's it. Absolutely ripped. Okay. Actually, it's right in the corner. I think it's mine, yeah. it's straight off. Brennan, you couldn't get out of bed. <laughs> Why did it come off? <sighs> Same spot, I cast it back on there. Yeah. I knew that'd do well. They're boshing up there, though. So you're doing well, Dave. Alright. Alright. Rewind again. 
steady, yeah, don't tug it really hard. That's it. That's it, you get in here, Dad. Go on. Pulling now, he is. He's pulling. Big, big fish, that is. Don't fall in, <laughs> Christ's sake. Oh, yeah. That's a big and nice. Oh. That's a nice fish. That's nice, Rendo. It's a nice fish, David. Yeah? Yeah. Um, your poor little leg. That's like well over 30 pounds. That's really nice. It's common as well. One of the ones I wanted to bugger. Right. Um, let's get, turn that GoPro off. So just press the top button for me. Bloody hell. It's 35 pound 8 ounces. New PB today. Not that thing, not that thing, that one. Good crab. Alright. Alright. Bit higher, can you lift him up a little bit higher? Brilliant, Dave. That's it. Alright? Yeah. Alright, let's get him back, Dave. 
Well done. <laughs> That's fantastic. Go. Patience paid off there. Yeah. Didn't it? Gosh, we bring us a yellow pineapple pop-up back. Well done. Oh, well done. <sighs> That's a white. Okay, you ready? Are you filming? Yeah. <laughs> it's not that bad. Don't kneel down. That's not that bad. Okay. Welcome to Blue Water Lakes, France. First time in France, isn't it, fishing? And he's had three PBs this week. So you know what happens when you have three PBs and you come to Blue Water Lakes? <laughs> then you get the bailiff bucket. So, Dave. That's your drink it all. Dave, please hold the fish. Please pretend to hold your fish. That's it. Over the mat, please. Good fish That's there. It. Look at the camera. <laughs> and I want you to say, open your eyes. Oh, and say, oh, I want you to say bailiff bucket. Go on, say bailiff bucket. Bailiff bucket. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well done, oh. Ben. <laughs> That's it. Got every shower now, Dave. Yeah, he's got him. Yep. And this is where you want a bit of hope. Yeah. So well, he's got, he has got two oars. Yeah. 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 Well, my granddad's rod. Oh, that was me. That was me. Jesus Christ. That was me. You feeling like it? Yeah. Yeah. 
it tore off that one. Like the blue water lake. <laughs> You don't like the boat then, Dave? Hey? You don't like the boat. Well, he wouldn't let me do it. You know, you can do it if you want. Normally, you two people in the boat, one rows, one place That's what, what I said to him. That's what. Is it good fish or not? Yeah, well, it tore off that one. Yeah, it took so much line before it got to the rod. It screamed off. Where was that from? Uh, 17 wraps of pylon. How many do you have now, Dave? This is third, I think, isn't it? Okay. How many do you have now? This is third or fourth. I've lost two on here. That's two I've got. You have one on there. One on there. Yeah, you had. I've had two. That's one. That's three yeah, I've got one. and two I lost. My grand had one on my fish because he didn't, didn't have any at the time. And what? we had, had all together, do you reckon? Do you know? This would be the 12th, I think. That's the only reason he brings you, so he can play all the fish. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only reason he comes with you, so he, you, he can play all the fish. Yeah. <laughs> any bit, any size? Friday evening, it's our last evening now, it's 20 to 10 at night. Um, I've, been, I've not had a fish since yesterday morning at 6 o'clock. Um, they're just not out here. There's nothing I can do about it. I've, said, I've had fish off the spots. I've, um, my left hand rod now, I've put it like three quarters of the way across the lake where fish show first thing in the morning. snow memory over there, it's quite clear, it's in front of a weed bed and I'll put about 100 baits over the top of it, just try and get the last gas fish really, but I'm happy with the way the week's gone to be honest, the weather's been a bit crap, rainy, lightning, you know, it's, it's not real brilliant for this shallow end, but it is what it is, it's fishing, I've had a brilliant week and my father-in-law today beat his PB again with that 35.8 common. Um, also he lost one this morning at 7 o'clock and then he had that 19 pound that went out in the boat and got through. Um, so he's done well. He's well pleased with that. That's what it's about, you know, helping others. Um, so yeah, we're going to the last night, but it's strange because I've not had a fish through the night. Which normally when I'm here, you pick fish up through the night. It's weird it is. But you know there's the oh, Jesus. I just lump right out of my middle rod. Um there's a lot of fish showing, but I think they're feeding on naturals. They're smashing the naturals. So when the sun's out and that wind was off the water earlier, um it's just clouds and clouds of like silty, weedy sort of stuff coming up from the bottom. But they're smashing the bottom. And that's why I'm on bottom baits. Where my father-in-law is, and my boy, they've caught 50% um, of their fish on the JH Bates pineapple pop-ups, which are like a yellow. Um, but I fished pop-ups the first 24 hours in this swim and I couldn't get, a, couldn't get a touch on them, because I think it's a bit more silty where I am. So I've, I've had all my fish on the bottom baits. But, you know, it's, it's been an amazing week, really. My first fish was the 54.8, followed by 44 and a quarter. And then I had a 42, 39.12. So it's a good average fish, you know. Um, I've 
had the biggest fish of the week so far out of every, all the anglers on here. Um, one guy's had 640 plus fish, I think. He was using peg two down the deeper end, which is norm normally where I go. I always fish down that end, because that's where the bigger fish are down there. It's a deep water. But I come up here for a reason to help these guys out. Um, and I think Dave, my father in law, has improved his fishing big time. He said now, when he goes to his local club waters and stuff like that, he's learned a lot uh, rig wise, casting bait application because he said wherever he goes he casts out if he doesn't get a bite and now he casts out again but a different spot place I've showed him how to mark up with sticks now clip get the right distance every single time on the spot how to find a clear spot fill the lead down because um, he's never done that before so he's learned a hell of a lot and my boy is casting now is spot on feathering it down off the clip feeling the bottom getting his donk, you know, that's what it's about, helping him, but I've spent a whole week absolutely soaking wet, if it ain't been from the rain, it's been from someone landing a fish, because it's so shallow, I've got to get in, to land them, and put them back, and they splash in the shallow water when you let them, and the boat, the bloody boat nearly sunk, but yeah, it's been a really good week. Jim and Jan have been brilliant hosts as normal. We had a barbecue tonight. So much food. Um, we all had a little social around the barbecue area. All the guys that are here this week um, that were paid for the food package. There's some here that are cooking themselves, but the ones who are paid for the food package um, were there. So that was good. We spent like an hour and a half around there. Having a laugh. So yeah, we're into our last night. I'll show the lake as we are now. Um, it's looking good out there. It's a bit of a breeze. Breeze on the water. Oh, one thing I've done tonight is I put a back lid on my right hand margin rod. Because I've got a savage liner earlier and I'm only fishing eight wraps on there. So obviously the fish are coming in really close, so I've, I've put a back lid on now. I've, I've dropped, put the back lid down about four rod lengths out. So the last four rod lengths to the rig are pinned down. Um, so hopefully that that will uh, stop the liners. We've got to be off in the morning by. 10 o'clock, so I've told the, the other two that I want to be loaded up on the trailer. There's a trailer behind us with a tractor, all our gear goes on it, and then I'll just come down, pick it up, the tractor up, and drive it up to my van in the morning. Um, so I've told the boys get everything on there by 9, quarter past 9, do the catch reports in the lodge, have a cup of tea, bake and roll, and then hit the road. And then hopefully be home tomorrow night by about half six seven o'clock Cambridge drop my father-in-law off unload his gear pick my wife and daughter up um, and then get back down to Stevenage and get me own bed tomorrow night which would be nice and then Sunday sort my gear out clean the van because I've got to take it back on Monday morning um, and then back to work and then I'm sure I won't be this week, but maybe the following week I'll get a session on my syndicate or, or go somewhere. Um, one of my mates has bought a, f um, a fishery, a well-known fishery, but it's a bit hush at the minute until it goes through. Um, but I can't wait to get on there. He wants us to get on there and test it and find out how many fish are in there and stuff like that. Um, so that would be good to get that done for him. I think we'll have a good social up there. Catch what we can out of there. See what's in there for him. So yeah. But anyway, if we get anything tonight, I'll get the camera on. Uh, if not, I'll see you guys um, in the morning as I'm packing up. Or when I finish packing up, really. I'll show you the lodge on the way out. Uh, maybe Jim and Jan, you'll see them. 
I don't like to encroach on people with a camera because you know not everyone wants to be on camera. Uh, ben will probably, but yeah, it's been a really really good week. I don't know if I said it before, but I'm booked on here for 2019, July the 13th to the 20th for a week, all inclusive, you know, food and stuff. Um, and Dave and Josh are coming with me as well. And we'll probably go down the other end then because I'd have had a bit more experience. I only brought Miss in because of the inexperience of them. But, you know, what I set out before this trip was for them guys to catch. I wasn't really that fussed about catching. Um, and I wanted them to have a really good time. They both beat their PBs. Obviously, Josh had that big catfish at 95 uh, and a half pound. My father in law's catfish about 28 pound, whatever it be. You know, he's well chuffed with that. He never sees fish that big. You just see the smile on their face. And my father in law this morning when he had that fish was just unbelievable playing it. That's what it's about, in it, enjoying it, not taking it too serious. It's been really good. I'm not looking forward to the drive home tomorrow. It's a bit of a ball ache, but it's got to be done. And if you want to enjoy yourself fishing, you've got to do the travelling. So yeah, I'll catch you guys in the morning, if not in the night. See you soon. Oh, the other thing I wanted. To the other thing I wanted to say to you guys, I want to recommend a product chair. I've been using it for a few years and um, mosquito repellent. When you come to France, there's shit loads of mosquitoes. The sky is black with the bloody things. You land in your bivy at night, bzzz, around your ear rolls and stuff. I've tried Jungle Formula, I've tried all of them with D. Avon, skin so soft, a dry oil one, yeah? If you go on eBay, it's like two quid um, for one of these, yeah? And I think you get like four for special off for six quid or something like that, yeah? I always have two or three of these in my bag. Um, it's the best stuff. And the other good thing about it, when you've been in the sun all day, it hydrates your skin again. So it's really good stuff. And I cover myself in it. My face, ears, neck, everything. Arms, it's brilliant. Ankles, where they normally bite you. And... I'm not going to have mosquito bites. So this is highly recommended. Some people say it don't work, some people say it do. But it definitely works on me. And my mate Mark, he used to get eaten alive by mosquitoes this year, and I've got him on this stuff, and he does not get bitten. Okay, so I can't highly recommend this enough. Avon Skin So Soft, but make sure it's a dry oil one. It's an original one, yeah. It's done, not a lotion or nothing like that. It's a dry, dry oil. It's the best. Alright, I thought I'd do that. And I'm, by, I'm not sponsored by or anything like that, yeah? It's just, it's a good, really good tip. There's nothing worse than getting eaten alive by bloody mosquitoes. Now what you want, Ben, is someone with a bit of rope. There's a bit of rope there, the end of rain, don't Put you? a bit of rope on the end of that, he, he pull you in. It's here, you just need to throw it out to us.
Might be enough to do. That's why you got to get in the boat because you never know. Yeah.